Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I will be doing a let's design a game um, about the game of paintball. Um, I haven't really talked about this before, at least I don't think so, but uh, I used to play paintball quite a lot when I was younger. Uh, it's pretty much five or ten years ago now, so I haven't been active lately, but um, since I haven't really been able to upload a lot of videos, I thought I'd just crank something out. Uh, I'm not quite ready yet to show you any Unreal Engine 4 uh, videos, uh, mainly for two reasons. Um, there's an NDA that says you can't show any of the tools, and B, because I haven't really created anything impressive enough to show you, because, uh, yeah, I obviously can't do any sort of tutorials on the tools or anything like that. So I might be able to throw up uh, uh, Unreal Engine uh, demo maybe in two or three weeks. Uh, but for now you'll have to make do with this one. Um, so about paintball. There has been a couple of different games when it comes to paintball. The first one that comes to mind was a Half-Life mod for the first Half-Life that I actually played um, when I played paintball as well. Uh, I think this is it. I just googled a random screenshot of paintball game, basically. Um, it might be a newer version. I haven't really played it in a long time. Um, but yeah, there has been a couple of sort of shooter versions of paintball, but what um, what I'm going to talk about today is a sort of a strategic version of the game. Um, now, Paintball, while you're playing it, isn't really that strategic. It's very moment-to-moment, -moment, sort of chaotic, uh, shouting and running and shooting and everything. Um, so playing something like this is more about aiming and things like that. Aiming is very tricky when it comes to paintballs. Um, there is also a board game that I own. I think it's in my parents' house somewhere. Uh, which is called Paint Check the Game, um, which is fairly... Um, it's pretty cool actually in how it represents the game. Um, basically what happens is you have your players and they run around and you use sort of these tools uh, here on the left. I'll switch white. So as you can see here you have a sort of angle uh, thing in the middle that goes from zero all the way up to uh, I think it's like plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, because you use dice to check if you're hitting. And then you also have your uh, distance meter uh, at the top here. So to play the board game, you basically have to hold these uh, tools sort of above the guys and try to knock anything over and stuff like that, which is fairly... Uh, it's just a bit too much trouble for a board game, unfortunately. But on the other hand, computers do this sort of stuff really, really well, in real time even. So instead of rolling dice and measuring things, things you can basically um, just use the computer to do all of these things for you. So instead of making a shoot a game, which is the obvious um, way to make a paintball game, I want to make sort of a better version of the board game that just uses the computer to handle all of the um, sort of weird stuff, um, which means you can focus on just playing the game instead. So, um, as you can see here, there are s sort of dots, which I think represent uh, positions that the player can take, basically. Um, just because you want to sort of divide the playing field up into a decent uh, unit, basically, for movement. Uh, another example of this is XCOM, which is obviously even better than a board game, because it's computerized to begin with. You can see uh, your cover. Uh, unfortunately, XCOM is a bit too... Um, it's a bit too static when it comes to cover. It's like either, either you're in full cover, uh, invisible, so they can't shoot you, you're in full cover and visible, uh, half cover, um, and then no cover, of course. There is a mod or an option for XCOM where you can 
uh, I think it's called dynamic angles or something which basically lets you um, instead of just having the same hit percentage from straight ahead as you do from like 10 degrees to the side um, you basically get an easier way of hitting because with default XCOM rules um, I will just switch layers oops so I can paint on this one oh it's not rasterized that's why rasterize um, but yeah if you're playing with the default XCOM rules there's basically a line that says if you're standing here uh, let's say you have 40% chance to hit and if you're standing here you have a 97% chance to hit um, which the dynamic angles uh, help fix basically so uh, the paintball game will also use some of these sort of angles because there are basically three components to aiming or hitting anything in paintball it's its angle its distance and it's your paint uh, if you have bad paint you're not going to hit anything if you have really good high quality paint they will be rounder and on average will hit in a smaller window basically um, there's obviously a couple of other things like if you're running if your target is running um, but yeah so um, when it comes to layouts of uh, paintball whoops sorry um, it's really easy to go onto the internet and find layouts because uh, most of the big tournaments um, actually upload the layout of the game or the the bunkers in a game uh, before a tournament so you're uh, able to practice at home because you know that if you just measure it up properly the game will always be the same so while playing the paintball game um, I should probably have come up with a name for it just to make it shorter but whatever um, my plan was to have it something like uh, this you basically see it from the top you start with all your five guys in the middle um, the number is obviously not important uh, you can change it around three man five man seven man um, which is pretty much five man is pretty much the default but yeah the plan was for each player plays simultaneously and then the moves are executed uh, at the same time so it's not like you pick one guy and move or in XCOM uh, that you take turns my plan was for each player two moves um, simultaneously simul turns and basically what the player does is you have I don't know a minute the time uh, again has to be tested to make any sort of sense but a fairly short amount of time to plan out your moves and you have to select each player um, and you take your two moves one move could be um, walking and shooting or just running or refilling your ammo um, things like this um, so depending on what you do you can have let's say you have guy A move one is sprint here whoops that was a shitty line he sprints there instead to behind cover who would have knew and then he shoots from here to here let's say um, now obviously paintball you have to be able to sort of shoot in advance because shooting if you start shooting when someone starts moving let's say from here to here you're not going to hit anything you have to either shoot in advance or you need to shoot at some guy uh, basically flank them uh, because if you're standing way out in the corner in the top right here and trying to shoot someone in the way top left corner over here you're going to have a bad day um, if you watch bad players play paintball they're basically just going to sit way way far away from each other and never hit anything because that's just how you start out because you're afraid of getting shot uh, when you're watching really good players um, they basically tend to run a lot more and uh, try fancier moves um, but yeah getting back to the rules uh, each player takes two turns 
uh, you can run and then uh, sort of be behind cover and shoot. Uh, you can run twice, you can stop here. Let's say walk and shoot counts as half a move. Um, oh yeah, I actually have them on the next slide. Oh my god, walk. But yeah, uh, walking and shooting, like you can see the guy in the back here, he's just walking and shooting, he's not really in any sort of a hurry. Um, what tends to happen when most games start is that something like three guys stay behind and just walk and shoot and then two guys do the next thing, which is running. Um, and as you can see here I have uh, shooting in parentheses because running and shooting requires tons of practice to hit anything at all. If you walk and shoot you obviously gain accuracy but you lose uh, defense or whatever you want to call it. It's easier getting hit. So running and shooting you shoot worse but you also uh, don't get shot as much. And then you have the sprint. Hello. There you go. Then you also have sprinting, which uh, doesn't allow for shooting because you're just in such a hurry. Um, so these are the three basic moves. Uh, you also have refill ammo and just standing and shooting, which I kind of forgot to include. Um, so the next thing is uh, cover. Um, cover, as I said before, with the XCOM pictures, um, is obviously going to be the hardest part because simulating it properly um, is quite a bother. Um, but it's also the most important point. So, um, as you can see, there are a couple of different ways. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. But uh, getting up or sort of snaking around, cr uh, crawling. Um, also has to be a move, whoops, sorry, because as you can see in the right side here um, you can't really sit on your knees um, you can probably, but you're likely to get shot from across the field and as you can see I just pulled pictures of Google image so there are tons of different watermarks and stuff which I don't really care about uh, but yeah, cover, there are tons of different cover, you have your basic uh, high. Uh, I don't really know what to call them because they have a wider base so they're not quite rectangles. But yeah, you have your big cover, you have your smaller cover, you have your really small shitty cover, um, and then you have your sort of low cover that you need to uh, be uh, lying behind. And then you have these sort of more interesting structures that allow you to sort of run between them and zigzag and play around with a big M in the middle. Like these are my favorite parts of sort of bigger games. Um, the sort of sneaky places. Because just having small cover and uh, just having small cover and nothing big blocking the middle um, generally means that a paintball game will be slow because everyone just takes the first cover that they can and shoot at each other forever. Which is obviously good if you're selling paint. But yeah, figuring out how much cover uh, one of the bunkers actually provides is probably the most important part, but it's also quite easy to be honest, because once you have maths you can pretty much simplify it. Uh, let's say we take the super simple uh, ray tracing version. Uh, basically what you do is you create a point, whoops, let's draw with white, you create a point, uh, now let's say in the other guy's head and then you create uh, sort of shoulder points, head, shoulder, um, let's say you have three points in the middle, you have three points at the bottom, you have three points at the top. So you basically just take your, um, you take your head point on this guy, then you check for each of the points on the other guy uh, how many of these are visible and then you just uh, sort of calculate a hit percentage based on your distance and the number of uh, possible ways to um, yeah, possible places to hit him um, 
as you can see in this case, it's the same. You can just say, oh, he has the three top points, maybe one for the gun as well. And then the rest is hidden behind the cover here. It's the same, it's the same. And for guys like this, it tends to be uh, something like that. So this is the place you can hit him. Um, most of the games with sort of the basic cover that I showed you before, like this, um, most of the high ones will just be people standing like this. Uh, most of the low ones is just people on their knees, sort of uh, looking out the side. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Then when it comes to shooting, um, obviously you can't say, uh, I want to stand here, whoops, drawing with white. And I want to shoot the guy standing behind cover over here. Uh, instead, what you basically have to do is create some sort of target triangle or weird shape, uh, something like this, and say, uh, I want to aim here. Uh, yeah, let's place it over the bunker over here. So I want to aim here because obviously um, the balls have fairly substantial weight for their lack of being aerodynamic. Um, so you basically have to sort of lob them uh, to hit, which means that you can't you can't just say, oh, I want to hit everything from here to here, because that's just not how physics work. Um, instead you'll have to lob them, which means uh, you can probably say, I'm going to aim over here. So this is my target this turn, um, which would also mean that someone who's aiming in this place would be able to hit uh, or do sort of reactionary fire against someone running from here to here, because they will obviously be passing through the target zone. Um, and reaction fire, what I mean with this is just basically that they have the potential to notice uh, someone who starts running in their field of vision um, and change their aim. Whoopsie daisy, something is weird. Um, so yeah, they will be able to adapt. Basically, if you see someone running and you're firing here, once they get through that field instead, uh, maybe you will be able to concentrate your fire because you've seen him and you're able to uh, basically move because you obviously only have to move a small number of degrees over here to uh, represent a large uh, change in the other end. And it's the same, let's say uh, we have a closer sort of example. Uh, let's say you're sitting here and you're shooting at a guy over here. Uh, if someone comes running, you will be able to uh, hit them every time. So you will need some sort of, uh, first the target zone, which you use to basically just uh, tell the game where you're going to shoot that turn. And then you also need um, something like a reasonable field of vision. Uh, so for this guy it really doesn't matter because he's just looking down the side. So you can just say he's, he sees the entire side here. Um, and then provide some sort of uh, reaction fire. Because um, if someone, if you're just doing sort of a pop fight where uh, let's take this side this time. So you're sitting here, he's sitting in the mirror. It's basically the same cover as you're in, but on the other side. And you're just basically shooting at each other uh, along the side. Um, this just means that eventually the better player, or the player who gets the advantage, is likely to sort of keep you in. Um, and running is a terrible idea, at least running on the other side. And running on the inside is probably a better or a terrible idea as well. Um, so this just means um, a roll of the dice in the game example, basically. Well, if you're sitting still in cover and someone is running towards you, um, you're pretty much always going to shoot them. And let's say if you're sitting in cover, shooting here, and someone comes from this side, you're basically always going to lose. Um, so that's what I was thinking with aiming. Mm, obviously you also need to refill. Um, 
I think something like four to six or seven rounds is probably the maximum because um, if you have if you can just shoot three times it's probably too short because you will have to do it all the time and if you can shoot eight times you're probably going to finish the game uh, before you have to refill which makes it uh, non-issue um, but refilling becomes sort of part of the strategical aspect of the game uh, which basically allows people to move without uh, fearing getting shot. So you can basically count for each enemy how many times they're fired. Uh, because in this case the game is going to be a game of complete information in that you will always know where the opponent is. Um, because obviously his turns are going to change uh, if you're if you pick the right moves or not is going to change depending on the moves uh, for the next turn so giving out the information from last turn is obviously not such a big deal um, oh I had a separate slide where I was supposed to paint for reaction fire but let's uh, let's just do that quick again um, so yeah if you're sitting oh, I'm just drawing with shitty colors today who would have knew? Let's take green. So if you're sitting here and you're shooting across uh, this guy, it's still a shitty color. Uh, I suppose it's not going to get any better today. You're sitting there shooting at this guy and you see this guy moving here. It's obviously not such a big angle that you can't uh, target him. Um, in this case it might be a bad idea because I have no idea how big this cover is. Uh, but yeah, you have your target here and within X angles, let's say 10 degrees, you're able to uh, still shoot. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, how likely it is for you to hit the enemy is obviously dependent on if he's running towards you or if he's running just straight car straight across. So if he's running here it's pretty hard to hit them. Um, if he's running straight towards you it's obviously easy to hit him. Um, so the picture I drew before was obviously bad so you have uh, you have player movement player move you have opponent move You have distance, you have cover, and obviously the paint is going to be the same for both teams, so we don't have to include include that in the in the math. So these are the sort of four um, four things that influence how you how easy it is for someone to hit another player. At least I think. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm just making it this up as it goes because I made these slides uh, a couple of days ago so I don't have it fresh in my memory. But yeah, that's the basic game. Uh, both the players of the game uh, take simultaneous turns and then it's just executed and you see if you hit or if you missed and how your opponent moved and then depending on what happened you basically take another turn um, Things like cover fire, um, uh, let's say player A is sticking out. Um, so let's say player, uh, the player at the top here is sitting aiming at player B who is here. So if this guy starts his turn one shooting at, at this place and then turn two does the same thing and this guy is turn one he shoots over here and then turn two he wants to shoot over here um, this would pretty much mean that uh, this guy has a bigger bigger shot at hitting so even though you have two moves and it's simultaneous turns someone who does uh, or shoots for uh, consecutive turns is going to have a better shot um, just because you have to sort of give the 
the player outside of cover earn an advantage. Um, the same goes for uh, different turns. Um, I shouldn't have used turns here. Let's say turn one. Turn one has two moves. Then turn two has two moves. Two moves. Uh, so if you're shooting at one place in uh, move two of turn one, then if you're doing the same thing on turn two, move one, you're also going to have the advantage. Uh, sorry if I don't make sense. I'm starting to think I don't most of the time. But yeah, that is the core of the game. So it would obviously be, be much more, uh, much easier to show someone while playing the game than it is uh, explaining it. Because the math would sort of take uh, take charge of all the uh, shooting. And the only thing you have to focus on is do you want to walk and shoot? Which means you can move shorter and you're easier to hit. Or do you want to run and shoot? Which allows you to travel further, but uh, also reduce accuracy. Do you want to sprint and, and not shoot? Or do you just want to stay in cover and shoot? Those are the basic options. And then it just becomes a matter of uh, sort of tactics and things like that. It's not a very complicated game. If you wanted to expand it, you could have things like player stats. Uh, you could have uh, things like different guns. And like in XCOM, you basically get a budget. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. Uh, but yeah, so you have different guns and you have um, different players and obviously you have a lot of different fields because fields would be the super easy part um, and then you allow the players to sort of spend money on different things like let's say you want to have better guns but you have to sacrifice speed or you get a faster shooting gun but you sacrifice uh, ammo capacity or whatever just make sure that everything has uh, positives and negatives and it should balance out with a ton of game testing, obviously. So, hopefully you got something out of this. This was just simple. Well, it was a terrible explanation of a simple game. But thanks for watching either way. Come again. Um, hopefully next time I'll be able to do an Unreal video again. Uh, maybe I'll go back and do some sort of Unreal 3 video. Just to get things up. Because... Uh, Obviously, I want more people watching, and if I don't post any videos, no one is going to. So, thanks for watching. This has been Jonas with a quite silly video on Painful. Thank you.